Hello good people, I'm Dmitry and we have a very special video for you today. I have been collecting some of the most popular microphones for streaming and for gaming and today we're gonna see which one sounds best to your ears. You better put on some headphones to get the best representation on how those microphones sound. And just uh, an FYI, I'm no sound engineer, so the recordings that you see now are coming not from a professional but from an amateur. With regards to audio, at least. As usual, everything will be linked in the description below, so let's check out the microphone roundup. Say hello to proper airflow with Be Quiet Pure Bass 500DX, a compact mid tower with a mesh front panel and three 140mm Pure Wings 2 fans that are silent and capable. Enjoy tasteful ARGB illumination, a Type C port, and an easy case to work in. Check it out below. Welcome back. So, I think we have a pretty diverse microphone collection some budget stuff, some staples, and some surprisingly good quality mics in here, too. So, put on some headphones and enjoy. Let's cover some basic mics first. Like the fifth in microphone is a condenser, comes with a user manual, a little stand for attachment and a non-removable USB 2 cable. The volume at the front has nice resistance, controls the gain of the microphone and there is no headphone jack. For $30, I'm really curious if you'll be able to hear the difference between the more high-end stuff, but given the current situation, this microphone is a lot more expensive. 50% markup at $45, we'll hear if it's worth it. The ModMic USB is always a nice addition to your favorite headphones. The magnetic clasp system is brilliant. We get the mute button down the cable that's perfectly in reach and a dual microphone capsule for noise cancellation or broadcast quality. At $80, it's a compact solution. You just have to deal with the cable. Next up, we got a Razer Siren Emote microphone and the only reason it's in here is because of that matrix LED that's facing the viewer. So it's the most engaging streamer microphone out there that can sync when you get a subscriber or bids or reaction. It is kind of pricey for voice quality at $129, but the basics are covered with a headphone jack and a mute switch and a headphone volume dial at the front. You will have to work with Razer Synapse to set everything up. Um, and the LED matrix is pretty beautiful, but the voice quality is not there for $129. I have the two Yetis, the original and the Nano. Love the blue color, by the way. Both have headphone monitoring, mic mute, and headphone volume dial at the front with a few more controls on the OG Yeti, like gain and four pickup patterns. The price difference is $30, which is totally worth it, as you'll hear. I really like the design of the HyperX Quadcast with that gorgeous red shine through that is also the built-in pop filter. We have the capacitive mute switch up top, four pickup patterns and a mini USB cable just like the Yeti with zero latency monitoring. And my only complaint here is the gain dial at the bottom that is super easy to just accidentally move out of place. At $139, it's a very good microphone that has built-in noise cancellation as well and red makes your voice faster, of course. The noise cancellation is not aggressive. It's basically a built-in low-pass filter that cuts out anything that's super, super in the background. My surprise of the day microphone is the new Audio-Technica ATR2500X USB. The Type-C cable is removable and easily accessible. The same with the headphone jack at the front with buttons for volume. The included tripod is kind of brilliant and the microphone sounds incredible for $119. That is an easy recommendation as you'll hear. The next two microphones are from Elgato, the Wave 1 and Wave 3. They use the same cardioid condenser capsule, so they should sound identical. Although, of course, the Wave 3 being the higher end model has the higher kilohertz range, but it really doesn't matter. The only difference are the controls as the Wave 3 has headphone volume and input gain adjustment with monitor crossfade, while Wave 1 only has headphone volume control and push to mute, while the Wave 3 has that fancy capacitive mute button on top of the microphone. They both have zero latency headphone jack and the Type-C connection with a long cable and a mic stand adapter. The Wave 3 is the most expensive in this roundup at $159 and $129 for Wave 1, but the icing on the cake is the driver software that's called Wavelink that is extremely powerful and is actually quite beneficial for streamers. It really lets you configure what you hear as a gamer, what you pass on to a different channel for the audience to hear as a viewer, and there's a lot of granularity. Is that a word? There's a lot of flexibility in what you can do with the software. It's awesome. And my last microphone here would be the Blue Amber, which is the only one that's not USB, so it's not exactly in the same category as the others, but it's only $99 and delivers a beautiful sound which is why it's in this video. And so now that the features are out of the way, let's do a recording test with the guitar and then my voice.
So now that you've heard the guitar test, which one sounded best to you? And could you even tell the difference? My own observation is that any microphone that has no sensitivity adjustment, like the actual dials, was louder just because it automatically boosts its gain to maximum and only tries to like lower it based on volume pickup. But I found the Quadcast, the Blue Yeti, and the Audio Technica to sound the best in terms of like delivering beautiful high notes that are super detailed yet sharp and not too harsh. And it's really impressive to hear what the Fifi microphone can deliver for $30, which I thought sounded beautiful and neutral. And now onto the vocal test. All our wrong today's highly recommend this one. From junior high on, Penelope maintained amicable but purposefully limited personal relationships so she wouldn't have anybody tethering her to earth. And she was utterly kick-ass, top of her cohort across all categories, universally recognized as a natural mission leader. She would be a pioneer. She would see the storms of Jupiter with her own eyes and surf the rings of Saturn on a spacewalk. And that was worth not having close friends or romantic relationships or a loyal dog. Everything was going according to plan until the first time she went to space. The launch was flawless. Penelope performed her functions with such precision, they would have used it to teach incoming recruits how gloriously capable an astronaut can be. She was prepared, she was ready, she was perfect. Until she passed through the top layer of Earth's atmosphere and her mind went completely blank. There's a small subset of people whose cognitive functions get scrambled in outer space. Something about how the pressure change of the vacuum affects the bonds between the molecules in the neurons of their brains. No one's even sure why it happens, but Penelope was one of that subset. Somehow this fact eluded the years of rigorous screening. One moment she's definitely guiding the launch vehicle through the final atmospheric layers, seeing the gaping expanse of space for the first time, her heart beating and measured but ecstatic bursts, the happiest she's ever felt, and then nothing. She doesn't know who she is, she doesn't know where she is, she doesn't know what to do. Something in her basic constitution keeps her from having a panic attack, as most people would if they suddenly woke up piloting a goddamn spacecraft with a planet receding behind them. But she can't remember anything. The instrument panel she'd spend years mastering means nothing to her. Inscrutable acronyms printed over lights flashing in seemingly random patterns. So she stares out the viewing dome at the radiant vapor of stars smeared across the black canvas of space. And we're gonna finish with my favorite vocal microphone, the Blue Amber, plugged directly into my camera. I'm sorry, she said, but I'm not really sure where I am right now. Her co-pilot is just as well trained and keening with tiny flames of envy at how far ahead of them she'd always ranked, relieved Penelope of her duties. They had to abort the mission at no small expense because her unpredictable presence endangered everyone. And just like that, Penelope, the best of the best of the best, became a threat. Fantastic book and read, highly recommend this one. So based on what you just heard, did you pick out any particular microphone that sounded best to your ears? Obviously the recording environment and how close you are to the microphone is actually quite important when it comes to a condenser microphone. So not being super far away, but being as close as possible to give you the best sounding example. For my tone, I find all the mics that add some bass complement my tone. So the Quadcast, the Blue Amber, of course, uh, the Audio Technica and the Wave 3, the Wave 1. And the only reason why the Wave 1 didn't sound as good is because my sensitivity and Wave Link in the driver software was cranked all the way up, which is what I did for the Wave 3, but turned down the actual gain on the microphone itself, but the Wave one just kind of carried over that same sensitivity, which is why it sounded so compressed, is because it was way too loud and it was trying to compensate. My least favorite sounding microphones was the Razer Siren Emote and surprisingly the Blue Yeti Nano. I find that it was natural, but a little bit too harsh on, on the sensitivity that it was boosting automatically, uh, while the Razer microphone was kind of bit too flat. In terms of noise cancellation, only the Wave microphones, the Audio Technica and the Quadcast have some like audible compression built in that mutes out some background noises, but it really is about your environment. Like if you're still typing on the keyboard and the microphone's on a table, you will 100% hear that, which is why it's important to position the microphone as close to your mouth as possible, lower the gain sensitivity, and play around with noise floor, noise gate in whatever software. I actually did a really cool video you can check out over here on how to improve your vocal quality for a gaming microphone, but it really applies to streaming microphones 
or these microphones as well. And so there you have it, my quick comparison on some of these really popular streaming microphones that you can utilize to improve your stream, your gameplay, your communications, whatever. I hope you enjoyed and let me know which one sounded best to your ears, both in the music test and the vocal test. Yeah, I'm Dmitry, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content, subscribe for more, and as usual, everything will be linked in the description below. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video.